Klein, founder of the Center for Rural Enterprise and Environmental Justice, Katherine Coleman Flowers. <laughs> Environmental Justice Advisory Council. I am a country girl from Lowndes County, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> where I learned important lessons about democracy and voting. For years, wastewater infrastructure for many families there has been failing or non-existent, not unlike rural communities nationwide. Now, with the help of this White House, we're fixing that. <laughs> Democracy, one person or a small group of rural folk can advance, can advance the quest for environmental justice. We are here because President Biden listened. Since the campaign, the President has consistently demonstrated his commitment to environmental justice for rural and urban communities. In his first days in office, the president created our advisory council, bringing the voices of communities into federal policy making. He believes that every child deserves a safe and healthy community with clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, healthy foods to eat, and access to parks. Three days ago, I had the pleasure of welcoming the newest member of my family, my granddaughter, Halo Olivia. <laughs> for my grandchildren's future and for generations to come, I am grateful that President Biden is putting climate and environmental justice at the center of the conversation. With that, it is my honor to introduce the President of the United States, Joe Biden. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that very much. And I'm sure you all love sitting in the sun. <laughs> but it could be worse, it could be raining. <laughs> a beautiful day, as that old phrase used to go, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And that's beautiful. Excuse me, I'm putting on my sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> as I've told my distinguished friend from Massachusetts, a good friend, that, uh, yeah. It's really very, very dull when after all these years of public life you're known for two things. Ray Man sunglasses and chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> very dull president. But, uh, <laughs> look, uh, you're a great leader, uh, Catherine, I really mean it. And uh, just name the most name one of the most influential people yeah. of the year. <laughs> Being a, a grandparent second time around, that's the best of the job, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, congratulations to your granddaughter. She's going to be looking up to you for a long time, and I thank everyone for joining us here today. EPA Administrator Reagan has done a hell of a heck of a job for us. Yeah. Yeah. I kid her all the time. Had she been born in the United States, uh, instead of Canada, she'd be the president standing here. Jennifer Grant on my secretary. <laughs> the chair of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, Brenda. Oh, where, where's the one about? <laughs> the member of Congress, 
I work on this issue every day of champions of environmental justice. Let's get something straight. None of this would have happened without you guys. And that's a fact. Stand up, and I want to be a war hero. I'm not going to stand up, but everybody else, please stand up. <laughs> and uh, I also want to mention a member who can't be here today, Congressman, an old friend, Don McKeach. I want to thank all you advocates and community leaders, including members of the White House and Environmental Justice Advisory Council, many of whom have been working on this issue for a long time and persuading those in power to pay attention. Pay attention, make this a priority to care. Look, what you know, what you do matters. It matters a great deal. I ask all of you on the council to stand up and be recognized. Some couldn't be here. chance to reflect on the national wonders of our nation and our planet, but we have to do a great deal more than just reflect. We have to commit ourselves to action. Will we step up to our ambitions? Will we stand together to meet the great challenges we have? Will we preserve our planet for future generations? History is going to judge us by how we answer these questions. That's not hyperbole, that's a fact. But today I hope the answer is going to be a loud and clear yes. Yes, we're committed to following the science. Yes, we're determined to strengthen the ambitions and that our ambition is action. And yes, we will include communities that have been denied basic security, basic dignity when it comes to clean air, having clean air, clean water, and clean energy jobs and environmental justice. And folks, like you, environmental issues have been close to my heart for a long time. You know, it was uh, one of the first people to introduce the climate bill did back in 1986. I grew up with many of the one Delaware and you know the claim on Delaware. I grew up, oh, right. well, up in Claymont, Delaware, which is just on the Pennsylvania line. At the time I was growing up there in a very area called Brookview Apartments, there were more oil refineries in that neck of the woods, in that southeast corner. Pennsylvania than in Houston, Texas. And I went to school about a half a quarter mi a mile off the road on this thing called Philadelphia Pike. And mom used to drive us up because it was a very busy highway and drop us off. And, and on those days early on when uh, there'd be the first frost, you'd turn on the windshield wakers, not a joke, and there'd be an oil slick on the window. Literally an oil slick on the front windshield. And how many folks across the country have had similar experiences? You know, we know public health impacts of toxins in the air and water, and there's real, real effects. So I think it's one of the reasons why I had childhood asthma. So many people in that area, we had one of the highest cancer rates in the nation in that part of Delaware for the longest time. That's why when I was running for president, I made it a priority to meet with, the environmental, with environmental justice leaders. I remember one conversation we had in the summer of 2020. Their stories were unforgettable. People living near factories seeing the paint on their cars literally peel off because the air was so corrosive. Imagine being a parent scared to death about what the air and rain was going to do to your kids. Landfills and garbage incinerators located right in the middle of communities. Drinking water contaminated by radon and arsenic. This kind of inequity and injustice goes against everything we stand for as a nation but it continues to exist. So, when I was elected president with Kamala and her partnership, we vowed to take action on the most ambitious climate and environmental justice agenda in American history. And that's exactly what we did. On day one of my presidency, we re-entered the, re the Paris Agreement because the United States should lead the world in Yesterday I convened a major economic forum on, on Zoom.
comprise the world's leader, leading emitters to accelerate progress and help poor com countries and communities deal with the impacts of climate change. And I announced that I'm going to ask Congress for $500 million to protect the Amazon deforestation. Yeah. It's an irreplaceable resource that the whole planet depends on. But to lead the world, we have to start here at home. My first week as president, I signed an executive order directing my administration to take sweeping action to tackle the climate crisis. And we set a historic goal to direct 40 percent, to excuse me, direct 40 percent of the overall benefits of all federal investment in climate change to clean air, clean water, clean transit, and more to communities that are disproportionately impacted by environmental degradation. And with your support, we're living up to that pledge through our Just for Justice 40 initiative. We passed, we passed the Black Lives Infrastructure Law to modernize our roads, bridges, ports, airports, and so much more, replacing every single lead pipe in America because we think everyone should be able to turn on a faucet at home with a 400,000 foot and drink clean water. We're helping school districts across the country electrify their school buses so kids don't have to breathe polluted air from diesel exhaust. Across Appalachian, the Great Plains, we're plugging the so-called orphan wells, which emit methane, which is significantly more dangerous and toxic than, than anything else that comes out of the ground. More dangerous gases poisoning air and water in rural communities. We're delivering clean water, clean sanitation to millions of families. We're cleaning up toxic pollution, including brownfields and Superfund sites, which have been a blight on communities for decades. The Vice President wanted to be here today, but she's in Florida, announcing investments we're making to strengthen the infrastructure in coastal areas that are vulnerable to storms. But together, together, we passed the Inflation Reduction Act makes the most significant investment in dealing with climate change ever, anywhere in the history of the world. Literally not figured. $370 billion investment, which will reduce annual carbon emissions by 1 billion tons in 2030. 2030. Folks, for example, it offers working families $1,000 a year in savings for providing rebates for buying new efficient appliances, weatherize their home, get tax credits for purchasing heat pumps and rooftop solar, energy-efficient ovens, dryers, and so much more. Provides tax credits for electric vehicles, new and used, because we're convinced, we convinced the auto companies on this lawn out here a year and a half ago to move to all electric vehicles in the near term. It's a gigantic game changer, and that's not all. The Inflation Reduction Act also is the most significant law in U.S. history when it comes to environmental justice. Here's just one example, air pollution around ports. Folks who live near ports know air pollution can be extreme because all trucks and all the vehicles moving goods in and out of ports and on the backs of ships are polluting the air significantly. Well, the Inflation Reduction Act includes major investments in adopting clean, heavy-duty trucks and clean port equipment. And folks, it's going to take make a real difference for families who live near those. We're investing. We're investing in air quality centers in communities near factories so people who live near them can know what the risk is and how safe the air is. Because we know historically red line communities are literally hotter because there's more pavement, fewer trees, so we're planting millions of new trees to cool down our city streets. And we're also making major investments in clean energy in disadvantaged communities lower energy costs and create good paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Brenda was recently in Houston where we're building a solar farm on the site of a former landfill right in the middle of a neighborhood. Another example of what's good for the environment is also good for jobs, Brenda, thank you. And this, these are the kinds of projects we're funding all across the country, in urban, rural, and suburban and tribal communities. And then last year, Jill and I reignited the cancer moonshot and cancer as we know it. It's a whole government effort, and one of our top priorities to better understand and prevent environmental and toxic exposure. If we do that, we know, we know we can save and extend millions of lives. Look, 
This is about people's health. Right. It's about the health of our communities. It's only about the future of our planet. Just since I've become president, I've flown over literally thousands of acres of land burned flat by wildfire because of environmental changes. Mm -hmm. More acres burned to the ground that I've witnessed from a helicopter in the last 19 months than, live, than, than are in the entire state of Maryland. It's if the entire state of Maryland burned to the ground. I've seen too many communities turned to rubble by storms that are growing more frequent and ferocious. And uh, it's a, an existential threat to our nation and literally to the world. I wish I could say that everyone saw it. Just this past week, we heard Speaker McCarthy and the MAGA, this is not your father of the Republican Party, and the MAGA Republican <coughs> Congress want to repeal climate provisions and the Inflation Reduction Act. They'd rather threaten the default on the U.S. economy than get rid of, or get rid of some $30 billion in taxpayer subsidies to, rather than get rid of $30 billion taxpayer subsidies to an oil industry that made $200 billion last year. Imagine making that choice. Imagine seeing all this happen, the wildfires, the storms, the floods, and doing nothing about it. Nothing about it. Imagine taking all these clean energy jobs away from working class folks all across America. Imagine turning your back on all those moms and dads living in towns poisoned by pollution and telling them, sorry, you're on your own. We can't let that happen. I mean, we really can't let that happen. That's why this executive order, in my view, is so important. And here are some of the things this executive order will do. Under this order, Environmental justice will become the responsibility of every single federal agency. I mean, every single federal agency. I mean, every federal agency must take into account the environmental and health impacts on communities and the work to, pre to prevent those negative impacts. Environmental justice will be the mission of the entire government. We work with state, local, tribal, and territorial governments. This is in order to direct the federal agencies to address gaps in science and technology. For example, there's a lot we still don't know about the quality of people's wastewater or the air they're breathing. There's still a lot we don't know about the cumulative impacts of pollution on people's health. We need to learn more so we can serve those communities better and help the world overall. This executive order, this executive order creates a new Office of Environmental Justice and a new role for the Chief Environmental Justice Officer. They're going to coordinate. They will coordinate all our efforts across government to make sure we're delivering the greatest possible benefits to people's lives. This executive order honors and builds on decades of work, including by many of you who are here today in the private as well as public sector. In two years, in two years, we're making real progress on the most ambitious environmental justice agenda in history. With this executive order, we'll go even further. Let me close with a story. Last January, the Vice President went to Atlanta to speak to a group of four historical black colleges and universities about voting rights. And on the flight home, I read an article about the crisis in, in, in Lowndes County we just heard about it, Alabama, just outside of Selma, where more than 40% of the major black residents, the majority, majority black residents, lack access to clean sanitation systems. 40%. Your article described a local leader who said, without federal intervention, we would have never had voting rights. Mm -hmm. Without federal intervention, we will never have sanitation equality either. Right. Well, I mean, to call my team and said, make sure our help gets down to the ground to these folks. And a few months later, Administrator Reagan and Secretary Vilsack were, and my infrastructure coordinator, Ms. Lander, were down in Alabama announcing a new intensive initiative to ensure that the poorest communities in America have access to clean, functioning wastewater systems. Right. But, The local leader who I just quoted is also the one who introduced me, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. A few months later, 
I went down to Selma, walked across the bridge to mark the 58th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Um, several times I've done that. A march for the right to vote, but also for all the rights that flow from the right to vote, including the right to breathe clean air, to drink clean water, and to be treated with dignity. All of you are making progress, but there's much more to do to finish the job. You just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity if we work together and we're like all the people on this on this lawn have done. And God bless you all. Keep it up. Now I'm going to sign this executive order.
Let's take it in.